This is Maria. And this is Esther. Together we are the, the Consort Counselors. Research has proven that every newborn has a sense of rhythm. Babies can distinguish slight changes in rhythmical patterns. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, and if you think about it, that is only logical because as human beings we are all our lives surrounded by rhythms. The rhythm of day and night, the rhythm of the seasons and even closer, the rhythm of our heartbeat. And this is very good news because everyone has rhythm. Okay, almost everyone we have to say, because apparently the brains of adults are less flexible than the brains of newborns and babies. And some of the talent we initially got might get a little bit lost along the way when not trained properly. So as adults we need to work harder to get our talents out. Practice makes perfect and today we are going to show you a few ways to improve your rhythmical skills together with your ensemble. Because playing a rhythm perfectly alone is brilliant, but playing rhythmically all together with your ensemble makes it golden. Let's look at the following pattern and divide it among the two of us. Hester will take the top line and I will take the bass. And we are just going to hum the rhythm together with the metronome. The metronome is set to 100 beats per minute for the eighth note or quaver. This will also be the time we have to take breath before the music starts. Da, da. Maybe you did recognize this rhythmical pattern because it's the opening of the beautiful C major sonata by Handel. The next step we do without metronome. We're going to take our instruments and play the first note of the bar short. After that, in our mind, we do the same humming as we did before and we play the first note of the next bar again and see if we are exactly together so that we check if our minds are rhythmically one. Not one rhythmical <laughs> line here. If it's a little bit too hard because one bar takes quite long, we can also have an intermediate step. We play the first note of the bar, the note halfway through the bar, and then the first note of the next bar. Yeah, much, much easier. easier. <laughs> As you can see, what we can learn from this exercise is that humming, singing or hearing the rhythm of your own part in your mind before you actually play it is very useful to improve your sense of rhythm. Plus, if you know what the bass part is doing, it's gonna help you listen out for a reference in the music and that's gonna improve your rhythm as well. And when imagining your line in your head or sing it in a shower will improve your musical projection for sure. Before you start actually playing a piece on the recorders, you can also turn it into a body percussion piece. So you basically produce the rhythms with your body in any way that you like. You can clap, you can hit different parts of the body, produce nice sounds, use your imagination and follow the rhythm. And in this way you will internalize it and make it your own. Decide on a tempo before you start and make up your mind how you're going to uh, start the piece or how much are you going to count in before, uh, whatever feels best for you. Un, dos, tres, cuatro.
when more body parts are involved to perform the rhythm and communicate well with each other, you for sure improve your groove and your multitasking talents. Once we are so familiar with this rhythm that we feel completely comfortable with it, we can take our instruments and improvise any notes completely freely, but just make sure we keep the rhythm, we keep the groove, the same feeling as when we were just doing the body percussion. Have fun! Un, dos, tres, cuatro. <laughs> by the way, which rhythm pattern this is. We are going to do a rhythmical exercise without the metronome at first to improve our imagination and our internal clock. Decide on a tempo, pound in and start the exercise and then we are going to move along with the beat quite heavily with our body. What can we focus on? On feeling where the downbeat is and also can you feel this heavy movement shared by the entire group? Let's just choose one note and stick to it for the whole exercise. Eight, three. Then practice the same exercise once more, but now with metronome and leave out all the heavy movements. Does this feel easier? One, two. Now that we have practiced with heavy movement and with a metronome, it's time to let it all go. We can move just naturally a little bit in our own personal way and we play without the metronome together. One, two. Are you having trouble with the rhythms in this exercise? When we need to perform difficult passages, it helps to mark in your score where the beat is with just a simple vertical line. There are two ways in which you can get an extra step into your practice. The first one is, if there are tied over notes with a slur over a bar line, remove the slur and simply repeat the note so you get used to the length first. And then when you feel safe with that, you can bring the slur back. For example, one, two. One, two. Another possibility is that you subdivide any long note into the fastest value that we are playing in the exercise, in this case eighth notes or quavers. If you do this, you can place a little accent on the first note of each of the actual written notes so that you can still hear the actual rhythm of the piece on top of the subdivision. One, two. complicated rhythms can be made much more easy when you add text to them. For example, if you look at the first few bars of this duet by Søren Sieg, the rhythm may seem difficult at first, but if you think about it, if you repeat it several times, you may come to the conclusion that it fits some words very nicely. Life is oh so beautiful, life is so beautiful, life is oh so beautiful, life is so... For many aspects 
facts of life, it is true that the more hours you spend doing something, the easier it becomes. This is for sure true for rhythm. If there are special sorts of rhythms, for example syncopations, that you find very difficult, when you work with them, when you repeat them in different ways and you make them your own, it will be easier to play them when they appear on a piece of music. And to practice syncopated rhythms, we go to Africa with this little exercise. We are not playing the rhythms with any instruments, but just with sounds or body sounds. It doesn't matter, just to internalize this rhythm and we are going to repeat it over and over. Go, 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 One, two, three, four. Go, 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 go. Many people, like me, tend to speed up a little when playing faster note values. Three, four. A good trick to overcome this issue is putting the metronome on the afterbeat instead of on the downbeat. And we already mentioned this in the episode about the metronome, but we are going to repeat it because it's so useful. Once we've practiced with the metronome on the afterbeat, we can remove the metronome but still have a special focus on that moment of the bar, maybe help it with a tiny little bit of length to make sure we are together and we are not speeding up on those moments. In the Netherlands, Henk Jan Honing is famous for his research on music cognition, especially in the field of time and temporal structures in music. He did research on how rhythm is perceived by adults, babies, animals, monkeys for example, etc. etc. I was lucky to have uh, some classes with him when I studied musicology and I remember that already back then a sentence he liked to repeat a lot was everybody is musical and that is also the title of one of his first books on the matter. It's very interesting to have a look at the website of the Music Cognition Group where you can find the results of all this research and see what he is busy with and that's gonna bring you some new insights on why music is so important and so necessary for a happy life. Thank you very much for watching today. If you like our work, please don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.